video i will illustrate for kva alternator or generator engine assembling after block replacement i will cover all the points all the necessary points here we are just starting from the piston uh, piston rings uh, placement so you can see here the oil scraping ring which is in the end that had been fixed and this one is the third part the, this is actually the oil scraping ring is in th three parts so the, this is known as helper so the helper is going to be fixed and in the mid there is a spring part which had been already fixed now we are going to fix this uh, compression ring the underneath the second one compression ring which is over the scraping ring so this uh, ring is going to be fixed and it is a little bit uh, care caring job because uh, the rings are very very much brittle and they can be broken very easily so care is required at that point at this particular point so here you can see um, we are going to fix this uh, rings on the the in the way that the gaps should come on the gudgeon pin side so the gudgeon pin is this hole in the piston you can see so the gaps should come in the gudgeon pin just i will demonstrate in a little while as you can see here this uh, this gap should come in this side this gudgeon pin is this gap is facing to the gudgeon pin side and uh, the other uh, ring gap is facing to the other side of the gudgeon pin so this should have 180 degrees uh, difference because it is required to not leak the compression and after cleaning we are going to fix this in the engine block so here we will put some assembly lube so for the assembly lube we can use regular engine oil of a regular grade uh, so if you don't have assembly lube you can use even the engine oil also and that's normal normally is the practice people are using uh, so this way we are going to fix it uh, there is actually uh, one problem we are going to we are facing over here as uh, we can see this uh, and crankshaft here is this is known as the crankshaft the crankshaft we are going to hammer but it is very very much tight in the block uh, so this crankshaft we are going to remove from the block and then later on we will fix it on the machine and i will show you the machining process in a little while so here this piston is going to be fixed there is a, a special tool also for this fixation but we don't have at the moment so we are using two screwdrivers and one screwdriver as a hammer and going to make it fixed but it's a little bit uh, crazy job you can say because care is required uh, not to break the piston ring so after cleaning you can see this had been fixed this had been fixed in and there is no crankshaft inside we will make it machining and then we'll fix it so here we just put this crankshaft on the lathe and we are just going to make it a little bit emery paper we are using to remove a little bit material we are sending it actually and on the other side of the crank we will make a little bit filing also uh, so now you can see this side had been prepared and we stopped the machine and we'll remove this crankshaft and we'll put the other way like this and this side we will make a little bit uh, sending and then uh, on the shaft we will make a little bit filing also because this has been this had been rebuilt before um, so rebuilding uh, put it in a little bit other state which is a little bit thicker so we are going to remove a little bit material from and here we are going to make it file uh, so that other components which are coming on this side uh, which are of course the um, whatever uh, shaft uh, and coupling that will be fixed easily then if we will make it a little bit filed and then send it so filing is very very much straightforward process you can say and on the lathe machine it is easy enough it's not very difficult and it is making evenly on a lathe machine because this is a round shaft you can say a crankshaft and so we are going to remove it now and we'll fix it in the generator so here you can see this bearing we are going to fix and this bearing should be very very much firmly fixed in the piece or in the in its housing and the crankshaft should not be very very much tight we are going to oil it to make the assembly easy uh, so by this way it should be and this should be snug 
a little bit hammering will be required because without hammering it will not be tightened but it should not take very very much force because uh, it should go easily the shaft and the bearing should be fixed firmly in the housing so this way we fixed it now you can see it's rotating easily and that should be uh, we are putting the uh, engine on the stand and uh, fixing the piston in somewhere like that in position now the piston is going to be in properly it needs a little bit hammering actually very very much little hammering is required we can use it a screwdriver to hammer it the back of the screwdriver is enough uh, now this uh, end bearing which is for the crankshaft we are going to fix it uh, first we will tight the uh, bolts um, with hands and then later on while a tool will be required we will tight it with the spanners and uh, whatever the torque wrench or a socket and T uh, but care is required again here because this is aluminium part the connecting rod is made of aluminium and we are going to fix a metal uh, bolt in so it needs a little bit care not to break down the threads if we will may break the threads then it will need uh, further machining which will be a problem this point we are going to turn the engine so the en engine should be turned easily and as you can see it is turning easily here this part is known as the harmonic balancer this is a very much important part and it had a special timing which i will show you where it will be meshed with the gear which is located on the crankshaft you can see uh, there are two dots one is on the a crankshaft gear and the other is on the harmonic balancer these two dots should be matched while these are matched so the timing will be correct as you can see here these the two dots had been matched and this is a place where it should be so these are the plungers which are used uh, to plunge the uh, connect the connecting rod sorry the uh, push rods for the valves so these should be fixed uh, using oil the assembly loop and we fixed it now is the time to fix the this, these are two actually two had been fixed now is the time to fix the timing gear which is for the cam timing of course the time uh, the cam timing gear is going to be fixed and we lobed it and now we are going to fix and here is also there is a timing and this is going to be meshed on the top gear of the um, whatever uh, crankshaft here is the timing also these are the two marks you can say these there is also a little indentation you can see here on the gear and there is a very very much small tiny indentation on the gear on the um, crankshaft also here you can see these two indentations we will make together we will match them and then uh, we will turn this engine after fixing it and the engine should be turned and there should be no restriction and uh, uh no problem no meshing nothing they, they i mean to say the gears should be meshed properly and there should be no restriction in the moment so if it is moving properly it means that everything had been fixed properly and the timing is correct as well uh, so this is one sign of the correct timing now it had been fixed and now is the time to uh, make the um, side cover uh, I mean to say the end cover silicone we are going to make silicone on the sides of the block and this way uh, we are going to make it even with, with the finger so with the finger one can even the silicone and the silicone is of course a sealant here and it will uh, prevent any oil leakage now it is even and this is a time to fix the um, paper gasket and of course the two doll pins had been fixed before this which i had not been captured on the camera here is one dot doll pin you can see and the other doll pin is on the opposite side now is the time to fix the cover so first we are going to make assembly loop a little bit and fix this cover this end cover on the top of everything so it should go like this and then we will tap it a little bit with a small hammer and uh, put all the screws all the bolts uh, first we will tight them using hands by hands only and then we will tight it using a T 
so just tight them in cross cr uh, crisscross pattern so that we will not crack anything uh, any um, to, uh, any stress we will not create on the end cover in this way and very carefully we will have to tight them all the bolts and then later on we can tight them using a um, torque wrench or a socket a big socket and T uh, so now it had been fixed on the other sides we are side we are going to fix this uh, magnet and this is the flywheel actually and there is a small magnet as you can see this is pointing up upward towards our side and it needs a little bit hammering also so that it should be fixed the key should be fixed and this point we are going to rotate the engine and it should be rotated very easily now is the time to fix this uh, ignition coil the ignition system and this is the cardboard piece actually you can see this is used as a gauge so that there should be uh, enough air gap in between the flywheel and the mag the pickup the ignition pickup our ignition coil later on we will remove this piece of cardboard because this will not be required so using our T we are going to tight it just firmly tight and that will be the uh, proper air gap position with this we removed that piece of cardboard and now we are going to fix the cooling disc or cooling fan and here is the device which is used for the rope starting and we are going to fix its nut its big nut and then that we will tight it using our tools and this cover red cover we are going to fix its side and we will fix all the screws we'll tight it thank you for watching keep on watching hope this video uh, will give you help uh, give a big thumbs up and subscribe my channel stay tuned